Okay, so uh, last video was uh, long division, and this one is synthetic division. Uh, you'll hear plenty of people say that they prefer synthetic division, and I would say that those are uh, folks that aren't familiar as to why synthetic division doesn't work all the time. And uh, we'll talk about that briefly in the front. And, of course, most mathematicians will tell you that they would prefer... Um, Typically, they would prefer long division, and maybe learning long division might be better because it applies to everything. Uh, so, this particular uh, this particular uh, division, uh, this polynomial divided by this uh, polynomial, a cubic divided by a uh, quadratic, cannot be done with uh, synthetic division. Uh, so, you would have to use long division here. No choice. And this one here. Uh, this cubic divided by this linear, great that it's linear, except that coefficient is 2. So you cannot use synthetic division there unless you, and it's really not correct. I guess you would have to look at this, cube minus, I think this is correct, plus 5m plus 6 divided by 2m minus 1. You would have to factor out the 2 so that you would have 2 to the m minus 1 half, and probably multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 1 half, so that uh, this is the number 1. It'll make all these numbers, all these coefficients look different, and it'll get rid of this coefficient. So I'm really just checking to see if that is a linear factor of the new cubic with changed coefficients. Um, then it would it would work, and that's just a big giant pain in the butt. So that would that would be why a whole bunch of folks, um, uh, knowledgeable folks, would tell you that they, if you could, if you were forced to learn just one, you should learn long division. When can we use uh, synthetic division? So in this particular situation, I have this polynomial. Let's say that I want to factor it, okay? Or I want to know the factors. Uh, a particular situation would be if I had this and I wanted to solve this equation, okay? Then typically we want these linear factors and we want them to be independent, so that's why it's set equal to zero, so that I can evaluate these two uh, factors in, uh, independently of each other and determine what the, fa what the solutions are to this equation or what the zeros are to the polynomial, or excuse me, to the function or what the roots are to the polynomial. So all same idea, different words because the uh, circumstances would be slightly different. Um, so normally we would factor. So if we factored that, we would get um, we would get the following. That was the answer to that. We would get the following, right? X x. The signs have to be the uh, same, and they have to be positive. So we would have. Oops, I'm sorry. That's not correct. Jumping the gun. Uh, three and two. So when I uh, distribute this binomial into that binomial, I would get x squared plus 3x plus 2x plus 6, which is x squared plus 5x plus 6. Boom. Got it. Now, that's how we'd normally do a quadratic. When we get to a cubic, you it's significantly difficult to factor, like hugely difficult to factor. Um, so what I showed you that, why I showed you that is because we're going to remember that the factor of this, the factored form of this trinomial is x plus 2, x plus 3. And we're going to take this one as, as my example, and we're going to use synthetic division to divide this by this binomial, or this linear linear factor. It's called linear because this is a linear term because it has one there. But anyway, um, so how do we set up synthetic division? So what would the root be for x plus 2? Hopefully you're telling me that I'm going to set that equal to 0. I'm going to determine that the root would be negative 2. Or what number would I have to would x have to be so this term would be zero, um, but because that's an expression, it's a polynomial. We're calling it a, a root. So I'm going to divide this by x plus two. How do I do that? Long division. I would do this, right? But we're here for synthetic division, so we're going to do the following. You're going to write the write the coefficients of your polynomial underneath this bracket, 1, 5, and 6. Leave some space. Don't have to crowd it. And then we're going to take the root, this guy, 
and we're going to put it over here. Then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this, uh, I don't know what to call it, line, and I'm going to bring this one down to here. Okay. Then I'm going to take negative 2, multiply it times 1, to determine the next coefficient, which is going to be negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. And then I'm going to add. It, pretend that there's a 0 here if you, want, if you can't remember to just bring the 1 down or this leading coefficient. If that's a 7, we'll bring a 7 down. But uh, we're going to add, so 5 plus negative 2 is 3. And then now we're going to take this negative 2. We're going to multiply again times the negative, times the 3. So multiply again. It's going to get really busy, but that's OK. We'll do a cleaner one after with the cubic. <clears throat> so uh, we'll get 3. And so negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. And then we're going to add again. And so 6 plus negative 6 is 0. And so we get a remainder of 0, which should tell you that this, in fact, is a root of this polynomial, which we knew ahead of time. So it better have come out to be 0, the remainder. But it is a root. Now, here's the, some things that some folks forget from high school to now, is that these numbers, excuse me, I'm going highlighter. These two numbers are the leading coefficients of the quotient, what's left over after the division. And guess what? Here they are, right here. That leading coefficient of 1 goes right there, and the 3 is right here. Okay. So th what this tells me is, uh, if I write it out like the division algorithm, it tells me that this, I'll write the division algorithm out, um, a polynomial equals the quotient of, the, of, a, of that polynomial times its divisor plus the remainder. Our remainder in this case is 0, but the original polynomial was x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals, the quotient was this guy, x plus 3. That was left over after we did the division. And our divisor, what we used to divide, was x plus 2 in the form of that negative 2 plus a remainder equal to 0. So this equals that. Yes, we knew that because when we factored this, that's the same thing, right? Or another way to look at it would be x squared plus 5x plus 6 divided by this guy is equal to our quotient x plus 3. And yes, if you understand division, you could view it as this as well, right? Because this times that equals this, or this divided by this. Oh, excuse me, you can't see what I'm doing here this times this divided by that is equal to that. Or this divided by this guy would be equal to that. That's this version. Or this times this is equal to that. That's this version, right? Those relationship that relationship exists between those three polynomials, specifically polynomial and two factors, or a polynomial quotient divisor, OK? So that's long division in the simplest form. I wanted you to see an example that worked. And so we're going to see an example that does not work. Uh, actually, maybe we want one. Well, we'll do two. We'll do one that doesn't work, so I just so I can just make one up, right? So x, uh, let's say uh, 2x cubed plus x minus 4 divided by x plus 3, OK? So in this case, my root is negative 3, right? And so my leading coefficient is 2, right there. And note <clears throat> that we are missing the squared term. So just like in long division, I need to put 0x squared. I, but in this case, since it's synthetic, I don't put the plus and I don't put the x squared. I just put 0. It's a placeholder, if you may. Then I have the x term. So that has a coefficient of 1. Then I have my constant, has, which is has a coefficient of negative 4. And I'm doing my synthetic division with negative 3. Okay. So draw the line, carry the 2 down. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. I'm going to add. So 0 plus negative 6 is negative 6. Negative 3 times negative 6 is 18. Add 19. Ooh, why did I choose those numbers? Negative 3 times 19 is what? Negative 
3057, I believe. If I'm incorrect, you can put it in the comments. And then uh, negative 57 plus negative 4 is negative 61. So my remainder is negative 61. So this is not a root of this original polynomial. It's not a root of that because I need to get a remainder of 0. Remember the remainder theorem? So if I were to take this, these pieces of information and write out the division algorithm, uh, or this, the relationship between all these, all these polynomials, I would have, uh, what was the original? 2x two, two cubed plus 0x squared plus x minus 4, that was the original one, is equal to the quotient, which would be 2x squared minus 6x plus 19, that gets multiplied times, that's uh, kind of large, um, this guy, which would have been x plus 3, that's this, and I have this remainder left over, negative 61 plus negative 61, okay? Uh, if you wrote it out in, in the division format, it would look like uh, 2x cubed plus x minus 4 divided by the other polynomial, which is that linear one, x plus 3, which equals 2x squared minus 6x plus 19 uh, I can say minus, but you could do this, plus negative 61 over uh, x plus 3, okay? Two ways to write the same relationship. Now, if we can find a cubic that works, then we can point at some other idea as well. And x cubed, x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x minus 12 divided by x plus 3. Since that's a linear term with a coefficient of 1, I can use synthetic division. So I'm going to have negative 3. I'm going to divide that into a polynomial that has a lean coefficient of 1. Next coefficient is 3. Next one is negative 4. Next one is 12. There are no missing terms, so I don't have to worry about a 0, a zero term. Draw my line. Carry down my 1. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. That's 0, so negative 3 times 0 is 0. Negative 4 plus 0 is negative 4. Negative 3 times negative 4 is positive 12. Negative 12 plus 12 is 0. So I get a remainder of 0. <clears throat> and therefore, this, in fact, is a root of this polynomial. And therefore, this binomial is a factor of the original polynomial. And the quotient is here, which means the following. My, let's write it this way, x plus 3, that was my original binomial or linear factor, which gave me this number to play with, x plus 3 times my quotient, x squared minus 4, is equal to x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x minus 12. Typically, if we're solving or some other kind of thing, factoring, whatever, we don't care about this after it's done. We really want to focus on this. If my task was to factor the original trinomial, or excuse me, uh, cubic, I can fa I have to factor this piece, right? And of course, luckily, that's the difference of two squares, so I can do this, right? X minus two, x plus two. If the if the request was um, here's my uh, polynomial, if I had this polynomial. Right, and I was given that polynomial set equal to zero, and I was told to solve. I would still do this whole thing to get to this place. Okay, uh, if I was given the polynomial and I was just asked for the roots, same thing. One of the easiest ways to do is things to do is just to factor. So. This is a starting point to factor is doing division, whether it's synthetic or long, doesn't matter. You're still dividing, okay? So that's an example of synthetic division. Uh, a couple examples of synthetic division. What is that, three of them? All right. That's it. Uh, I think that should be it for uh, this particular go around. Good luck on the next one.